have Michelle Folly joining us uh, from Georgia, University of Georgia. And you've been working on some uh, molecules and, and chemistry related to COVID-19, right? Yes, I have. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. So normally my specialty is uh, carbohydrates, uh, and this is sort of a side project. Um, but uh, I wanted to try to do something, and something that uh, probably not a lot of good experts are doing. And I'm not a good expert. I'm really more of a physical chemist than a biochemist. But I have learned biochemistry in my job. I've been there 15 years. Anyway, so um, I, I got to thinking, you know, what. Um, what could be the most practical thing to look at and i thought what are some things that people have in their uh, everyday environments that might be in some way useful uh, against the, the virus and um so i i thought you know and this is also something that is uh, transmitted through the air and uh, so i got to thinking about aromas things that we might inhale uh safely already that might also impact the virus so i have um allergies, uh, seasonal allergies and uh, other food issues and what have you. So, um, and, and so, so this means that I can't always get or easily find uh, relief from the tradition, the currently accepted medicine. And I sometimes have to go off and do, you know, very careful trial and error and figure out other things that work for me. And it so happens that um, I, I have, um, uh, allergies to, you know, pollen and cats and ferrets and things like that. And that those allergies, if I don't keep them in check, they will also give me a certain type, some asthma. It's a, a form of asthma, not the kind you're probably really familiar with. It's still annoying. And one of the things that really gives me relief to the asthma is um, a, a mixture that includes lavender. Lavender is one of the main components. I also added frankincense and some turmeric and usually some form of mint and, and maybe other things just to change up the smell a little. But um, I, those things really help me, but of that list of things, lavender is the one that's the most commonly available. Frankincense is very expensive, turmeric's not that easy to find, etc. So I, I wanted to focus on lavender because this is something that's very, very available. And I know for a fact that it, at least for me, maybe not for anyone else, you know, I, I can't speak for anyone else or tell anyone else to do anything. This is not medical advice. Okay, please. Um, but for me, at least the lavender really, really helps with, um, you know the asthma symptoms that i sometimes have and i cannot take the normal medicines i, I have a, an adverse reaction to them so i can't take them and that's why i know about this so anyway yeah i had very you know personal reasons for choosing this um my next step was going to be eucalyptus because i also use that for simple purposes and i quickly realized that there's no way that my modeling could really answer this question completely but i was curious and i wanted to do something so i started and um the first thing I thought was, well, let me start with the protease. At the time, the protease was the, this main protease that is called the M protease in the membrane. Um, it was probably the one with the best or most structures in the WWPDB database. And it seemed to have the most information around it. And one thing that I know how to do reasonably well is to take a bound complex between the carbohydrate uh, or uh, some sort of ligand and a protein and run simulations and see what they do. So that's what I started with. Um, what you see right here is the 6LU7 uh, molecule from the WWPDB, the protein data bank. And I have, um, so I was going to run simulations, uh, long simulations preferably, and I, I didn't want them to take a lot of time. So I sort of, the first thing I had to do was figure out where's the binding site. And I found Binding site. I actually looked at every single structure of the, of the protease um, that was available, and I sort of from those figured out the binding site. And it's, this ligand is not all of the binding site. It's kind of you know a little bit more complex. It sort of goes up here, and, and you know it's just sort of a larger shape. Um, I looked at them all, figured out where the binding site is, and then I said, okay, what parts of the protein can I crop off and not much interfere with how the binding site? Uh, behaves or moves, right? And this bottom part down here that you see is not in, uh, that does not have a surface representation. That's the part that I cut off. And you can see it's relatively far from the binding site. Uh, another thing I did was I 
I was uh, careful about uh, restraining atoms. So in the binding site, uh, there's only a mild restraint on the carbon alphas and no restraint on the ligand in my simulation. But then, you know, one step back from that, I have a much stronger restraint on the carbon alpha. And then behind that, where it's sort of uh, next to the, to the cutoff, I've restrained all the atoms. So this part cannot move at all down here. And the only part that can really move really is in the, the binding site, in the binding site. So first I wanted to show that because in the next, uh, all, all of the subsequent ones, you're going to see that this whole bottom part is missing and because I've chopped it off in order to do the simulation. So um, that was the main purpose of this. Do you have questions you want to talk? Cool, yeah. No, I mean, this is great. We, we've been looking at this uh, main protease structure uh, as well and you know, checking out a bunch of different uh, you know, either screened compounds, crowdsourced compounds, AI-generated compounds. Um, you know, it's a highly targeted area, but you know, for something that's available at like local Whole Foods market and you can just like buy it and, um, you know, does it have a, an effect? Yeah, you know, who, who knows? You know, does uh, the computational data suggest that? Yeah, you know, maybe it does some sort of interference. You know, I, I guess. Uh, you know, these are the type of questions that we want to find out. So, I, I think it'd be great to to look at some of these compounds. Um, actually, in in the pocket. All right. So what you see in here now is in uh, the the surface. The thing that is shown in surface is the chopped off part of the protease that I, I described earlier. And um, you can see also in it, there's the, um, this is the ligand that was bound uh, to the 6 l 7 And one of the reasons I really liked Nanomer got it in the first place was to do what I'm about to show you right now, which is really not so easy to do with most of the modern um, software. And that was to say, okay, I think I know where this goes because I'm a chemist and I have a pretty good idea you know, where this thing would likely fit and do some, maybe even stick. And, you know, I may not be perfect at that, but I have some idea. And I thought, you know, what I want to be able to do is just like put it right there and, and say, okay, I want to start off with this thing there. And, and if you notice, there's really not too much by way of clashing. And the, I just lined up the acetate part of the lavabulo acetate with, um, the, um, uh, the the similar chemical moiety inside, right? You can see that they're very similar. Um, and I just lined that up and sort of let it sit there. Um, and then I removed this ligand and, you know, turned it into simulation files. Um, any the, the structures that you see from now on will not have uh, this ligand in them anymore. It'll just be this part of the protein and the lavandula acetate. Um, so what I've got, it, you see in um, sort of the large uh, balls, you can see that acetate moiety that I had aligned on top of the, um, the similar mm -hmm. structure, structure that was already there. And then here's the rest of that, um, the ligand that's bound. So what I want you to notice is that these, during the simulation, this part really doesn't move a whole lot, at least not compared to other um, parts nearby. So um, it kind of, finds its happy place and stays, you know, it moves around a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it's kind of staying where it was. So this is a good sign. This is the sort of sign that I would look for to say that you know, this molecule is probably reasonably well bound on uh, here. We could actually just color that. Um, yeah. Yeah, just so we could see, um, like specifically there, you know, that, that nitrogen really like keeping it in place um, you know the molecule fits in the pocket pretty well and then that nitrogen i'm um, really just having those interactions with the oxygen pulling it back in so um my boss i was talking to my boss about this and he asked me um he said well what have you done to to validate this or do you have any ideas how to validate it and of course there's there's no experimental data so i i, I don't know he does this sort of thing i don't I did find one study where someone tried to take vapors from essential oils and do, you know, inhibition assays on it, but that, there's just not really any data. So I, I had to think, what in the world could I do to even show that this is working in some way but correctly? And the first thing I thought of, and the only thing I've tried so far, um, but not the only thing that I intend to try, was I thought I'll take these two oxygens and I'll just turn them to their analogous carbons, right? So this would be an sp3 carbon, and then this would be, um, uh, these would be, well, I mean, 
I guess it would better be the SV. No, this would be an SV2 carbon, sorry, because this is a double bond to keep this plain. And then this one would be an SV3 carbon, right? And so I, I changed uh, I changed them into that. And so the next workspace um, just sort of shows what happened what happened there. So this is um, this is the this is the structure that I, I sort of started with. So this is what it looked like after I changed my, my carbons into uh, I mean, the, ox the oxygens into carbons. And then if I, I'm going to make this one go away and show the other one. Um, and this one, uh, this is actually after minimization. And it has, even during minimization, it moved a bit. So um, here's that um, hydrogen that one of those carbons would have been near and it has moved away from it yeah no, nowhere clears a clear um yeah can't even form the hydrogen bond not even close to it right 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 um and so once again i'm just trying to prove that the simulation at least was doing something something reasonable and so you know the first thing was just to see what happened and even after minimization it's already starting to show that once you get rid of those two oxygens it's it's not going to be bound as well anymore um then the next um, the next workspace is just you know about 30 sec 30 nanoseconds of simulation of this. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I think we could uh, just move on to that last one then. Yeah, the ones that are sort of in the large is you know just showing the part that was originally oxygens it, and that's kind of useful. And then you can see the the um, nitrogen over there where the bond would have been. This has moved you know considerably farther away from it. And in fact, it. It may have found some other place that it wants to sit, some other binding space that um, something out found it. But you see, even this is jumping around in ways that the other one did not, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot less stable, it seems. Right, and I suspect that if I um, run, uh, if I run this simulation for, you know, 200, 500 nanoseconds, then it's probably just going to sort of crawl out of the binding site and, and, and go somewhere else, unless it find some place in the bottom site where it really um, is, is is well well you know what also be really good is if we could see the lavendule um you know way outside the binding pocket um and then over a long period of time you know find its way in in like a non-biased way uh that so in terms of being able to do that in a simulation entropy is is your enemy here because it, like we almost never can do that or we almost never try to do that because there are an infinite number of other places for it to go other than into this binding site and although it does do that in reality uh, it's just on the time scales that we can model it's not that easy so i could things that people have done is i might take a box of you know this protease in the middle and then just put a bunch of lavandulal acetates in that box right mm -hmm. and just hope that one of them eventually goes into the binding site but that's a lot of of work and there's just no guarantee that your specific simulation is going to sample the conformational space to make that happen right the other things you can do uh um, there are things like uh, uh, uh let's see um, you can do steered in D and you can sort of do a, a pulling sort of thing or a, a nudge to last advance. There, there are a number of, of things that you could do to sort of bias it, um, you know, coming from the out into the box, but those are still biased and I, I don't like to do this unless I have to. So really what we usually do is we start it off in the pocket and we see what it does in the pocket and a lot of times if it's not supposed to be there it just bounces out really quickly and then we know okay this definitely doesn't bind and then when we find things that bind we then uh, rank them we look at their energies and their interactions and see if there are stable interactions or if it stays in a particular place for a long time it's it's that's kind of state of the art and it's not the best or not ideal but it's what we've got um so yeah i would love to do that but it's not really easy right now Another thing I guess I should point out is that I'm doing these simulations in the gas phase. So I, 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 the virus is spread in droplets, which is sort of liquid phase, but it's also barely, only barely liquid phase, right? So it's sort of aerosolized. And so I don't know um, a good validated way to simulate that sort of thing in, in, the, in a very realistic way. So I started in the gas phase. The so software that does gas phase is oddly enough, not as fast as the software that does uh, 
simulation in a dust solvent phase. So I'm moving on to uh, solid phase simulations and I think I'm going to see if I can just put like a droplet around it and um, or something. I don't know if uh, I haven't decided exactly how I want to do that. So um, some of cool. these can, they can speed up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what type of software are you using right now to generate these trajectories? Um, I'm using Amber, uh, either 18 or 14, uh, and uh, various machines that our group has. Our, our, our clusters are a bit old right now. We've recently gotten uh, some, some grant money to, to make them better, but you know the, our, our computers are a little old too, so I'm not able to go as fast as you know, the people with the fastest current machines. Um, and yeah, Amber 18 if the machine has it, and Amber 14 if it doesn't. And uh, yeah, so Amber, mostly for everything okay awesome yeah no I, I thought this was super interesting and um yeah i'm uh i i could see how it could potentially interact right you know who, who's to say if it would it be a good treatment or you know, you know definitely not a cure but you know, maybe a, a good treatment or something um and, and and you know just looking at it in vr gives me a much better understanding of that so yeah thanks for sharing all this right yeah so my thought was really um that even if it only a little bit slows down the virus, you know, if it only impacts a, a small percentage of the viral particles, then that's that much less load that the body has to try to deal with uh, that the immune system has to fight, right? So, um, and maybe it could even, you know, help with virals, particles that are in the air. Um, so yeah, so I was really trying to look for something that could be in the air as opposed to a drug right so if you're looking at a drug mm -hmm. you want something that is soluble and that can make it through the body digested and then you know cross the proper barriers that it needs to or what have you and i so this is you know a totally different route thanks everyone and uh you know keep up with the video series we'll be highlighting people from the community lachelle you know thanks so much for for coming on